Hello, I'm Jimmy Lanley with Bright Ideas Press, and I have with me here the president of Bright Ideas Press, Tyler Hogan. Today, he's going to bring a, be bringing us a short message talking about how do you know when you're doing enough? Tyler, take a moment to introduce yourself to the audience. Well, hello, I'm Tyler Hogan. Uh, I am a homeschool graduate and now a homeschool dad. I've got four little kids. Uh, Kaylee, our oldest, is in second grade now, and We've got a four-year-old, Avalon, a three-year-old, Sierra, and a one-year-old, Aiden. So three girls, one boy. Um, my wife is also a homeschool graduate, so the, the two of us are having fun being second-generation homeschoolers now. My parents started Bright Ideas Press when I was a little kid, and it's just been our family business, and I started working here when I was probably about 12, but full-time after I finished college. Uh, and now I get to now I get to run the boat pretty much, which is fun. I, I enjoy this job a lot. So most of what I do is curriculum development. So I spend a lot of time thinking about how to make our books uh, as as useful and helpful as they can possibly be. And I have a a lot of wonderful homeschool families that I get to test them out on, which is a lot of fun too. Well, Tyler, today you're going to be addressing a really tough topic that a lot of homeschool moms and dads probably agonize over a bit, and it's that big question, <laughs> am I doing enough? And that question can rear its head periodically and really mm -hmm. cause a homeschool mom a lot of anxiety. So tell me, where does that question even come from, and are we asking the right question when we say, am I doing enough? Well, that that's a, that's a tricky thing to identify. I think a lot of it is just anxiety you know everybody wants to make sure that they're measuring up that they're doing all the right things checking off the boxes that that no one can look down on them for anything um and and honestly for myself when i ask that question i'm not so much asking am i doing enough it's it's more personal than that it's i'm asking am i enough you know there's that spiritual component to it that says you know i get my worth from what i do right so I need to make sure that I'm doing enough so that I can say with confidence that I am enough on, you know, just on my own. And, you know, as a Christian, that's complete baloney. You know, I am not enough in, in a cosmic sense. So part of me needs to be okay with answering that question and saying, no, I'm probably not doing enough. Um, but that doesn't affect my identity. That doesn't change who I am. That doesn't affect my, my position in Christ, my relationship to God. Um, but it is a hard question because we want to do enough, you know, even if our hearts are in the right place and, and we're, we're coming at it from a, you know, from a grace-based perspective and, and not trying to put performance on ourselves and judge ourselves by that, it's still a, a very big question because we have responsibilities, you know? We have responsibilities to our kids, to our, our community, to our churches, to ourselves and our spouses. And we want to know, am I doing right by all of these people that I, I have, you know, this measure of responsibility towards? So I think it is a very good question. It's also kind of a dangerous question because you can get mixed up with a lot of, uh, a lot of really big landmines for our hearts. Um, but it does still need to be asked. And, and we need to start from that grace-based place of, in Christ, God says that, he is satisfied with me and that my relationship with him is secure. Um, and then we need to go on and ask, am I doing enough from that place of humility that says, well, okay, I'm probably not enough and that's okay. Let's start looking at the logistical side of things too. Um, and, and honestly, this is a question that we hear probably more than anything else, uh, aside from maybe, you know, how do I get Adobe Reader onto my computer? <laughs> That's probably the only thing that we get asked more frequently is those kind of tech support questions. It, on the phone all the time, we get it in emails, we get it when we're at conferences chatting with people, is just that, you know, that deer in the headlights stare saying, there's so much that I could be doing. Am I doing enough? Am I doing right by my kids? Am I doing right by God? Um, and that's, it is a hard thing because it causes so much stress, so much anxiety, so much guilt, so much grief. It is just, it is the biggest question that we get. So I, so I do, do want to spend. Oh, I'm sorry. How do we get between, you know, the good question and avoiding it going into the dangerous? What do we do to keep from making it a dangerous question? 
Well, and I think that all goes back to understanding who you are in Christ. You know, when Christ redeemed us, he gave us his righteousness. And because of that, we can kind of separate our ego from our position with God. You know, our relationship with God is secure, not because of what we do. If we fail in everything in our lives, that relationship with God can still be completely secure. So we need to be able to separate our identity from our actions um because we are human beings right not human doings mm -hmm. that's <laughs> it's kind of a trite phrase but it's really true mm -hmm. and being able to separate our egos and to go at this question from a place of humility where it's not going to devastate us if the answer is no i think that's an important thing now i'll also say this 98 percent of the people who ask this question are probably doing enough you know i have i've only met a few families in all the years that I've been around homeschooling families, I've only met a couple where the answer is, no, you are not doing enough. In fact, you're really messing up your kids and you need to change something now. That's That's been so rare. And usually that's because, you know, there's some really dangerous stuff going on or there were, you know, one CPS visit away from some serious jail time and there's drugs being dealt in the, in the garage. You know, it's that kind of situation where, no, you're not doing enough. But for the people who are asking this question, they probably are. They're probably doing just fine. And just the fact that you're asking is a great indication that you're at least on the right track. And maybe you need to tweak some things, but that doesn't mean that you are, as a person, insufficient and not enough as a mom, as a teacher, as a, as a spouse, as a parent. Those, are, those kinds of identity questions are very separate from this performance question of am I doing enough? Does so that make any you, sense? It does. And so tell us about the performance side because aren't there things we actually can use to measure our performance and our children's performance? There are, yeah. And and if you've ever had a chance to look at a good scope and sequence, um, those are incredibly useful. And you can just Google, you know, homeschool scope and sequence for any age group or any subject matter and you'll find 91,000 results and some of them are gonna be from textbook publishers like Bright Ideas. Um, some of them are gonna be from homeschool moms who blog. Some of them are going to be from education specialists. Some of them are going to be <laughs> people linking to common core standards. And, and it's up to you as a parent to decide who you're going to listen to when it comes to those sorts of things. But I find that scope and sequences can be very, very helpful tools. Now, they, they are generic you have to make them fit your family. You can't just use them as they are. I've, I've never seen a blank piece of paper like that uh, that's just worked perfectly without someone doodling all over it first. Uh, and, and in high school, you know, you, you usually don't find as many scope and sequence kinds of materials for high schoolers, but a good place to start would be, you know, what are your state's graduation requirements? What kinds of classes do you have to teach to graduate? That's a starting point. And from there, you can start tweaking and massaging and saying, yeah, we want to make sure that we do this this way. We want to do extra here, maybe minimize that, meet, meet the basic requirements, but that's not our focus. You know, those kinds of tweaks are super important because, I mean, like I said, those are, it's just a framework. It's, it's just a skeleton. And if you're building a house, you need more than just the frame. Um, so... Get a, get a good scope and sequence, absolutely. Do some searches, read up online, do your homework, do your research, find out what the, what the standards are. Um, but don't stop there. You really do have to personalize it. And there's a lot of different ways to personalize those kinds of things. Um, you have to think about um, not just, and I'm thinking about particularly with high school here, you know, if you look at your state graduation requirements and say, okay, you need to get three credit hours in math. Well, I mean, okay, that's that's something. Um, but well, what does a credit hour mean? And what do those particular math subjects need to entail? Am I doing algebra one and two and geometry? Or do I need to get calculus and trigonometry in there too? Uh, does consumer math fit in there? I mean, there's still options. It's not just, yes, here's what every single high schooler is going to have to accomplish. Um, that that's been tried and that usually doesn't work because people are unique. I think back to when I was doing math in high school and uh, I, I did four years of math 
not because I was really good at it, but because it took me a long time to get the concept. That was something that we had to tweak. I only got three credits because it took me three years to get two years worth of algebra done. I was slow on that. And then my last credit was uh, consumer math. So uh, my, my geometry was very lacking. I never took calculus um, and I never took trigonometry. And, and that was okay. I still met my graduation requirements. If I had been wanting to become an engineer when I grew up, that probably wouldn't have been okay. I probably would have needed a lot more in the math and science department, but uh, I was a theater major, so you know <laughs> that, that was fine for me. And the business math and the consumer math was what helped me more than anything. So you have to tweak to your kids. Know you know what are their what are their career paths? Is this a math and science kid, uh, or is this a, an arts kid? Is this a, a literature kid, a history kid? Where am I going to focus my time and energy? Because not every history class is the same. Not every math class is the same. You have to take that, that bare bones, here are your graduation requirements, and make it fit. So and, how can our curriculum purchases also help us to know that we're doing enough? Well, a good curriculum publisher is going to tell you if this is worth a full credit or a half credit, or if this is a one-year curriculum for you know your elementary and middle schoolers, or if this is meant to be done in a semester, um, they, sh they should be able to give you some kind of indication as to what level of intensity and what kinds of subjects are going to be taught and what the mastery expectations are going to be. That should be on the back of the book. If it isn't, then you may need to, you know, give, give the publisher a call and have a chat with them about it and find out, you know, what, what does this curriculum equate to? What is it worth in terms of meeting our educational goals. So tell me briefly, Tyler, when a child is in uh, elementary, what do you think is enough? What do you need to cover? You know, what subjects and maybe how many hours a day? And then bring it on up to middle school. We know high school, you've talked about that a little, and a lot of that's up to the state. But tell us, when you're talking about little kids, like preschool and then elementary and then maybe into middle, what just some general guidelines. General guidelines? Okay. Well, I mean, there are some core classes that you're probably going to be required to teach, you know, reading, writing, arithmetic, that sort of thing. Um, most states are going to have some kind of requirements when it comes to science and math, history, English, um, maybe physical education. You'll, you'd have to know what your state requires because that, that does vary state to state. In terms of big picture, I would say the most important thing for elementary and middle school is wide exposure to a, as much information as their brains can soak in and to ignite a love of learning. If you accomplish those two things in elementary and middle school, then I think you're wildly successful. Um, in high school, things get a little bit more regimented and it's less about you know, sparking that love of learning and apply, than it is applying that love of learning. Um, but for younger kids, if, if my kids know how to read and they're reading, if they are starting to understand uh, history and they're starting to understand some basic concepts and science, for my real little ones, that's all I'm looking for. You know, it doesn't have to be so much about the curriculum and so much about the scope and sequence when they're really little. Um, like I said, you use that as a framework, but the most important thing is to make sure that you're making forward progress, to make sure that there's some interests that are being developed and that they're starting to explore. Because really that's what those young ages are about, it's just the exploration. So every mom watching this video has just taken a big sigh of relief because she realizes, <laughs> oh, I'm giving my kids broad exposure and they love to learn. And Tyler Hogan told me that that was enough. And that is enough for elementary grades, and they are doing enough. And I, before we leave, I do want to give one plug for uh, Bright Ideas Press Complete Curriculum Plan called Illuminations. If you go to brightideaspress.com, you'll see Illuminations there on the main page. And that covers pretty much every single grade all the way up through high school. It has add-ons even for little kids to do it with uh, elementary age, middle school, and high school kids. And it uh, plans out everything you need. And if you use Illuminations, you will feel assured that you are doing enough. It is a complete plan. Tyler, did you have any other little closing words, maybe about illuminations or anything else? Before well, we I, I know one thing with illuminations is that we always, and, and this is our philosophy with everything that we publish, but we always try and give 
way more than any one family should ever try and accomplish. And that's because we know that you know your kids, you know their learning styles, you know what's going to work for your family, you know what's realistic and what's going to grab their attention. And we expect that as parents and teachers, you're picking and choosing. With any of our curriculum, if you try and do everything, you will burn yourself out. And that is the worst. I would rather do too little than do too much and burn out my kids and make them hate learning. Um, so pick and choose, find the things that work, find the things that help you meet your goals and cut out the rest and don't feel bad about it and don't look back. Excellent advice, Helen. It's a great note to end on today. Uh, we're so happy that everyone was with us today, whether you're watching live or watching the recording. You can find more content, uh, video content on our YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and search for Bright Ideas Press, and you'll find us. If you want to know more about our curriculum, just go to brightideaspress.com. Thank you, Tyler, for the time that you've spent today. If Thank anybody you. has any questions, you can leave them on the YouTube video.